Tonight we are talking about the very exciting, very attractive, and very orange Fire 4 Effect Shadow 2 Optic Ready. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and I'll be your guide in pursuit of practical pistol proficiency. And tonight we are talking about the Fire 4 Effect Shadow 2 Optic Ready. Now for those of you familiar with the channel from way back in the day, like 2017, I've already reviewed this gun in its iron sights trim and the video is terrible and I'm sorry to those of you who watched it. There's a link somewhere up here where you can go watch it if you hadn't seen it and we can both have a good laugh about it. And you might have seen my other video decrying CZ for being optic ready, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Fire 4 Effect Shadow 2. And this Shadow 2 was made by the people at Fire 4 Effect Weapon Systems. That's Fire, the numeral 4, Effect Weapon Systems, because using numbers in place of words is edgier. Just take my word for it. But I can't really rag on them that much because they are based out of the great state of Texas, so owning a Fire 4 Effect Shadow 2 is likely to increase your testosterone levels and increase your animal magnetism, probably. And for a quick education for my YouTube sensor who's probably reviewing this video, this looks like a fancy whiz-bang gun. It is a fancy whiz-bang gun. However, this is exactly how the gun left the factory at Fire 4 Effect. If I could put a link in the description, you could go check out yourself and see where this is, but you guys don't allow that either. But you can order this gun in this trim for about $2,600. That's a loud! That's a lot of money! And it will show up at your door exactly like I'm holding it right here. So this gun is unmodified, and I'm not encouraging the modification of guns. So with that disclaimer out of the way, the good folks over at Fire 4 Effect saw a gap in the market when carry optics became popular in USPSA. At the time, there was a weight limit, so they had to figure out how to make a gun that weighed less than 45 ounces. And what they came up with is what you see before you here with these window cuts on the slide, reducing the weight of the Shadow 2 to be in line with what the carry optics division requires. So this gun is the most expensive version that they offer on their site. They have lesser models that start as low as about $1,400, but you're not getting the fancy finish or the whiz-bang trigger job or any of that craziness. And for some of you guys, I know you're gonna do it. Don't do it. You're not allowed to compare your favorite gun and how many of them you could buy with how much this gun costs, unless that gun is a Sky. A Sky is the only unit of measurement you can use to tell me how many you would buy for this gun. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the channel, this is a competition gun and I am a competition shooter. So all of my opinions are gonna be informed based on using this gun in competition, although I understand some of you guys are crazy and actually carry these things. If you're here for hot takes and dodgy advice that are absolutely terrible for competition and get you bumped into open division or potentially disqualified, just watch the next recommended video here on YouTube and I'm sure some guy is gonna give you bad advice for competition, but hopefully I can steer you clear on this one. And my reviews follow kind of a typical format and there will be time codes down in the description where you can kind of skip around to parts that are of interest to you, but they generally go as follows. First, we're gonna talk about things that I don't like because no pistol is perfect. Then we talk about the frame and the slide and grips in this case. We'll talk about the trigger, the controls, the shooting experience, and then the aftermarket support and wrap it up with sort of final thoughts. So if you wanna jump around to any of these sections, just check out the description. There'll be time codes there that'll take you right to that. So you ready? Here we go. The so first and foremost, the things I don't like because I'm petty. And this is a wonderful gun. This is a positive review, but just hang in there. We'll get there, I promise. $2,600 is a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. That's loud! That's a lot of money! Not everybody's gonna be a buyer for a gun at that price. And as I mentioned, you can put one together for less than that, but it's not gonna look like this. And you knew this was coming for people who like to watch me hate on CZs, but 
This gun, for you high round count users out there, you're gonna have to change the trigger return spring about every 10 to 15,000 rounds, and that's kind of a pain in the rear to do, specifically if it breaks when you're on the range. If you are a reloader, this is a European pistol, and CZ, amongst other brands, provide a super short throat for their guns, which means that if you reload certain projectiles that are popular, say, in competition shooting, like 125 coated round nose lead bullets, then you're probably gonna have to load super duper short, and that's gonna cause harsh feeding, potentially in this gun and in other guns, potentially causing issues when doing like unloaded starts and things like that. And this one's petty, and I fully admit it, is taking the gun apart. To take a CZ apart, you have to hold the slide slightly out of battery, then punch out the back of the slide stop on this side of the frame, and then pull it out on this side. So you use the corner of a magazine to do that. It's not that big a deal, but it is kind of a pain in the rear. It'd be nicer if there was like a takedown lever or some other way to get the gun apart. But good news for me is I don't clean my guns all that often, so this wasn't really a big issue for me because I basically just kept them oiled. And if you thought that was petty, this is super petty. Part of the joy of handling an expensive gun is just how well they're made, how they fit together, just cycling the action in your hand. It feels like the frame and the slide were put together by the same gunsmith and it's just a super smooth, buttery smooth action. And as you move it to the rear, it just feels like the slide is like on glass ball bearings. It's just awesome. You don't get that with this. For a $2,600 gun, it is still fit like a service or production gun with some wiggle at the back of the slide, which is fine because it aids in reliability. It's just, it kind of robs you of that experience. And as I kind of move it to the rear, and this may be due to how the slide is PVD coated, but I can, it kind of hitches as you see it kind of going along the way there. And I can actually feel like each coil of the spring compressing, which it's a fine pistol. You don't notice it at all when you're shooting it, but when you actually kind of handle it beyond kind of the feel in the hand, when you first grab it, when you start to mess with the mechanical bits on it, it just kind of falls flat because it feels like a production gun. It doesn't feel like a semi-custom gun, which it technically is. So that's it guys. That's all the negatives that I had and they're honestly not that negative because this gun is pretty awesome. So let's talk about this gun. But first we have to discuss the sacred relationship between creator and you the subscriber. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time so that you can get in on this action too. I make world-class firearms content for you to enjoy here on YouTube. You watch these videos, you begin to start getting back in shape and making good on all those New Year's resolutions. You also start boning up on things like physics in high school that you didn't really pay attention to. And before long, you're a certified astronaut in the Elon Musk space program. Um, you know, what? Is that actually, that actually happened? I th of course it happened. I think, I think this is a reflection of how, like... Booked for the maiden voyage to Mars or the moon or some asteroid that happens to come by the Earth in close orbit with your flag featuring my logo on it so that when you go out on that spacewalk and put your feet on whatever it is Elon's telling you to put your feet on, you plant that flag and all of the denizens of the galaxy will know of the world-class, no, galaxy-class videos we make on this channel here. As you guys are probably aware, everybody asked for them, but I ask you for the like. The like helps YouTube know that this video is relevant. You find it interesting and it's gonna recommend it to more people. It helps my message get out there. So if you could just hit that like button, I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you've seen a couple few of my videos by now. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything and I'm not that obnoxious most of the time. Check out the links in the description. There's some cool stuff there. And more importantly is the link to my Patreon where if you are picking up what I'm putting down, you can get three to five blog posts per week exclusively on my Patreon page with behind the scenes stuff. We have open communication on the videos and stuff that's coming out. So if you wanna kinda of guide the future of the channel, that's a great place to do it. So now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the content, you steely-eyed missile man. So let's talk about the frame and the grips. Now the frame is big and heavy. It is a full-size gun and I can fit my size LXL hands all the way down the grip. It does great. The beaver tail kind of comes to a point here at the back of the gun, so it kind of creates this one sort of hot spot where all of the recoil sort of comes straight into your hand, which we'll talk about later in the shooting section, but it's very intuitive when you wrap your hand around this gun. Your fingers fall where they're supposed to be more or less to replicate sort of good, traditionally accepted pistol technique. 
The grips that are on this gun are the Palm Swell bogies, which have these little pockets that your hands kind of suck down into. And they're really great for keeping the gun planted in your hand and letting it kind of not budge at all. Really well suited to competition. They're also great at taking the dead skin and pro grip off your hands to the point where the CDC issues an edict that it must wear a mask in public as well. One of the best features of this gun is the front strap and back strap checkering. The checkering on this frame is absolutely exquisite. It does exactly what you'd want and that's bite into the backs of your fingers and the palm of your hand. So the gun is just locked in and not going anywhere in recoil. It is a very well put together frame. And that brings us down to the trigger. And the trigger is what everybody is gonna want to geek out about because the gun has such well put together ergonomics. It's a big heavy gun at about two and a half pounds. And the trigger is very light. Out of the box, the trigger pull weight in single action is about two and three quarter pounds. And the double action, and this is set up to be uh, ammo sensitive, it will only ignite Winchester and Federals with 100% reliability, is about 4.75 pounds, which is super light. The double action trigger is okay trigger reach based on the frame, but people with small hands are probably gonna wanna look at a reach reduction potentially on it. But it's not the most impressive trigger. It's very good, don't get me wrong, I am totally picking nits here. There is some hitches as you move it to the rear as there's like little pockets of stacking, but when you're actually pulling the trigger like you would in competition, you don't even notice it. It's beautiful and well done. Single action, you can see when the hammer is cocked, the trigger sits further back in the guard and there is very little wiggle. So if you are a trigger prepper, basically if your finger's resting on the trigger, that is all the prep you get. There is like almost no movement. So then the hammer is going to fall after you work up to two and a half pounds and it is a pretty darn clean break. It feels very good. Action's gonna cycle and then your reset is very short, just right there and it's not moving at all. So this is an excellent trigger for you trigger slappers out there and based on the ergos, the heavy weight of the gun and the very light trigger, it is going to make a lot of fundamental issues go away. So if you need a crutch, this is a pretty fancy one. But in order to help you guys understand just how good the trigger is, we're gonna defer to the most objective measure of triggers on the internet, and that is the Humble Marksman Trigger Rating System, where both the double action and the single action rate on the scale a full party on Wayne. Party on Wayne! Party on Garth. <laughs> and that's gonna bring us to the rest of the controls on the pistol. We've got three to talk about. We have the mag release, slide release, and the safety levers. There is no decocker on this pistol. So if you are competing, you're more than likely doing it in a division where you have to start hammer down, which means you're going to have to lower the hammer on a loaded round, which means pulling the trigger with a round in the chamber, then letting your thumb be in the way or what, pinching the hammer, whatever method you care to use, to get the hammer to be all the way down like you see here. The first is the mag release button, and the mag release button is honestly brilliant. This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, mag release buttons that anybody's putting on competition pistols. It's just big enough, it's just in the right place, and to get on that button, you don't have to totally tear up your grip to get there, and the magazine's absolutely spit out. It's very well done, so good job, CZ. The slide stop slide release is in such a position that you can't really reach it, at least I can't with my firing hand thumb without violating my grip and, and just seating the gun all kinds of crazy in my hand. So when I was competing with these, I would actually drop the slide if I had a slide lock reload uh, with the thumb of my support hand and I'd recommend that you maybe check that out. The slide release is quite large and it occupies some space that some people like to put their hand getting a really high grip. So that is going to affect your ability to get super high on the frame, but not that big a deal if you accept a more neutral grip sort of like that and just kind of let your thumb sort of fall along the slide release. The manual safeties are basically useless because this is a devil action gun. And because this is the internet and I know that there are those of you out there there are those of you who are gonna to want to talk about the manual safeties, despite the fact this is a double action gun that is intended to be shot, hammer down for the first shot. But yeah, the safeties are basically useless. They are very thin and flush, just as they're intended to be, and they are not in the way at all. So they're perfect if you're shooting this gun double action. If you wanna flex on the Facebook groups or whatever because you convert some expensive pistol to be single action only and you're an accountant or dentist who doesn't shoot anymore, that's totally fine, that is on you, but it's intended to be shot with a double action first pull. 
So the slide in the sights are what makes this pistol so special. Uh, as mentioned previously, they had to make the gun lighter, so they put the window cuts in the slide up here, and they have chopped up the slide to provide all these interesting cuts uh, that both make it look cool and make it lighter so that it weighs less than 45 ounces in carry optics division. The front slide serrations are super duper usable. They are fantastic. The way that they mounted this optic system is actually a patent pending design where they've got it mounted about as low as you can mount it and they had to basically scab on these little ears on either side to catch the post through the optic body. So that's kind of a cool design, really thinking outside the box. It's really well done. And then I can't give them too much credit. They might get too proud. So we have to talk about how they laser etch CZ Stindva on the slide because this is a gun made for the American market and we're going to put Czech fake roll marks on it. Because Stindva means Shadow 2 in Czech because that would be like spelling out TWO. So Shadow TWO and not just the number 2. So, I mean, it's way more hipster to actually spell out numbers rather than just use numbers, right? That's what we're talking about here. Except for the company name, I guess. But it's not that important. It's a very well done slide. Uh, it's great. There are no co-witness irons, as you probably noticed, and there's no ability to put them in there, I guess, unless you got like a Delta Point Pro as your sight and not a SRO. And as for how the gun shoots, it is super duper controllable. I haven't competed with this gun in over two years and immediately picking it back up, I was able to make the dot track straight up and down, shoot itty itty bitty groups because the gun has an enhanced bushing. Uh, the gun is super well put together and very, very easy to shoot. There are a lot of guns you can shoot in carry optics and not many of them are probably better than the CZ Shadow 2 with an optic. As discussed earlier, the grip of the gun just kind of intuits to the shooter on how you need to be gripping the gun with decent technique. And the result of that is the gun becomes very practically accurate, meaning that you're able to build a good enough grip that you can stabilize the muzzle through the trigger press. Not mechanical accuracy, which is how repeatably the barrel and slide lock up on the frame, but the practical accuracy of how generally good you can make hits with is exceptionally good on this gun. And the window cuts actually balance the gun beautifully. The Shadow 2s with iron sights are generally very muzzle heavy and feel like they want to just kind of dump out of your hand at the front. And this is much more balanced. It feels like the center of balance is kind of right here over the trigger guard. And in recoil, it doesn't kind of buck around as much either, which is nice. I, if you're using it as a crutch because you want the heavy dust cover to flop it down out of recoil, then you may not like it as much. But this is a great opportunity for me to lecture you on how making a gun heavy doesn't necessarily make it recoil less. Because this is a high bore access gun relative to some of the striker fired offerings on the market. And as a result, when I shot it on the Mantis X, it got about five and a half degrees average over 10 shots of muzzle climb, which my Glock 34 competition guns would get sub four degrees of climb and my Beretta Rodeo gets about four and a half degrees of muzzle climb. So this gun actually does have a little bit more muzzle climb than other offerings in the carry optics segment. That said, that big heavy frame does cause the gun to recover quickly. It flops out of recoil quickly and it kind of stabilizes quickly. And when you're like swinging onto targets, that big heavy frame will help the gun kind of settle out of the transition so that you can break an uh, aimed shot faster. So being heavy doesn't necessarily make the gun recoil any less because if you shoot this side by side with a gun that has a broader grip across the back, like a Glock or my Beretta, this actually feels like it shoots harder, which is sacrilege. A lot of you people are probably going crazy commenting right now on that. But if you A, B, and C those three guns, I think you probably agree just based on the broad shape of the grip along the back that this gun actually hits you in the palm harder. And that's not to say it hits you hard in the palm. It is super manageable. So this gun, while being very heavy, it is better balanced, so it doesn't flop around and oscillate quite as bad as the more muzzle-heavy version, but it's just the weight alone is not causing it to recoil any less. And I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. And to that point, weaker shooters who don't have as much upper body strength are probably not going to like the fact that this is a two and a half pound gun. Uh, something more in the middleweight territory of like 30 to 35 ounces is probably going to be better on long training days or all day long type matches. 
because 40 ounces in the holster all day, even in a competition belt, you're gonna feel it at the end of the day. And if you're doing a lot of dry fire, just swinging the sucker back and forth, you're gonna feel it there too. So it's sort of a double-edged sword, but I'm a big enough guy where it doesn't bother me. I actually kind of like the weight to the gun, but I know there are people out there who have issues with it. And that brings us to the aftermarket. The aftermarket on the Shadow 2, it has won the aftermarket as far as competition guns are concerned. There are holsters out the yin yang for it. Mechgar has fixed the magazine game for the gun, so there are magazines that are cheap, great, and readily available. There's all kinds of grips for it. There's whatever you could possibly want for it in a competition context. They make it for the Shadow 2 because this is a very popular gun in USPSA and IPSC competition. So bringing it all home, this is a pretty gun. I don't think anyone's gonna argue with me that this is a good looking gun. It is an expensive gun. So a lot of people aren't gonna have an appetite for a $2,600 pistol, but this is a very, very fine pistol. Let there be no doubting that. The gun is a performer, no question, and it can be a little high maintenance due to the trigger return spring, which is kind of a pain in the rear to deal with as discussed. But as long as you keep the guns oiled, they absolutely run like sewing machines. There aren't a lot of options that are easier to shoot than a Shadow 2. So thank you to my buddy Ike for letting me borrow your gun. Thanks Ike. Uh, check back every Tuesday and Friday for new content here on the channel. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care guys.